when you wake. Get some cake and ride them pretty little horses. A black and a bay, a sorrel and a gray, a whole heap of little horses. A black and a bay, a sorrel and a gray, a whole heap of little horses. Little old hearts, little old cow, ambling around on the old day map. Little old horse, he took a chew. Darn if I don't, said the old cow to go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep, you little baby. When you wake, get some cake and ride them pretty little horses. A black and a bay, a sorrel and a gray, oh, heap of little horses. Black and a bay, a sorrel and archive in the basement of a library in the middle of Kentucky and we're listening to fiddle tunes all day. <laughs> This one tune played by this one fiddler named Lella Todd. So now we're at the front door of this little white house in a little town in Kentucky, and we knock on the door, and this woman with white hair opens the door and welcomes us in, even though she's never met us before. We're sitting at her kitchen table, and she's feeding a short, a strawberry shortcake. And she tells us about this fiddler. She tells us about her childhood 70 years ago, and this is a story that she told. And if we could get the lights, Jake. She says, when I was a little girl, I lived on the banks of the Red River. And to grow up back then was very different from the way kids grow up now. We didn't have TV, we didn't have radio, so you had to make your own fun. But I was lucky because I lived near Miss Lella. And if you lived near Miss Lella, you had it made. She would play hopscotch with all of us neighborhood kids. She was a short, squat little lady. She wore glasses, and she giggled all the time like she was a kid. She grew a beautiful garden. I remember Miss Lella loved flowers. She took us out into the woods behind her house, and she taught us to hunt for squirrel. Miss Lella was a great shot. She could skin the hides off those things faster than any man could. She loved being outdoors. Lots of days would find her down the bank in her little boat, catching fish on the river. She had a pet crow which she caught and tamed. She taught it to talk and when she called, it would fly down and land on her shoulder and stay there a while. She also had a pet cat named Kitty Press, and her husband Claude would feed the cat hot buttered biscuits under the table. So they had a good fat cat. I remember one winter when I was small, my mother lost a child in childbirth, and Miss Lella came to the front door and she had most beautiful bouquet of white flowers for my mother. She was just a precious person. 
Miss Lella didn't have children of her own. She kind of adopted our whole neighborhood of kids. We'd all run down to her house after school, and she would always welcome us in, and she would always give us the best snacks. She had a huge wood stove in her kitchen, and she would pop popcorn for us and fry hot griddle cakes right on the top of her stove. After we ate, we would go into her living room where she had this red velvet couch where she kept all of her instruments, fiddle and banjo and guitar, and Miss Lala could play anything with strings on it. She would take her fiddle out onto the front porch and she would play for us. And when Miss Lala played, us kids would get up and we would dance and dance. All of our community knew of Miss Lella as a fiddler, so anybody that had a party or a dance would ask her to come and play. She was always ready to go. She never went anywhere without her fiddle or her rifle. She would head down the road and she would meet up with her friends. And they would sit down to play music. And they have wonderful memories of Miss Lella. They'd say, oh yeah, she played the prettiest music that you ever heard. She would roll the notes in there just perfect. started playing at supper time, we might not stop until 12 o'clock or 1 in the morning, and Miss Lella would hang right in there. She wouldn't quit playing until she about fell over. She was in her first heaven playing music, and that was the story we heard in Letha Sexton's kitchen. After she told us the story, we got in the back of her, her Honda sedan and went down the road to the cemetery where Miss Lella is buried next to her husband, Claude, and stood by their graves. We went further down the road to where Miss Lella's house used to stand and stopped at the edge of the road and Letha said, oh, I can just picture Miss Lella standing there with her pet crow on her shoulder like it was yesterday. She said, I wouldn't miss that life, just living by her for the world. Yet. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Anna. Um, we, we made that cranky um, on Anna's floor and um, at the time, and we took it to Letha Sexton's house, the lady that was telling the story, and we showed it to her, you know, to make sure she was alright. Fact, right. fact, fact check. check, you know, make sure she's okay with us using her words, and she said, she called her brother right away, and she said, Rodney, come quick. These girls made a TV of Miss Lella. <laughs> if only it were that far reaching. So, Letha Sexton uh, passed away uh, this January. We're glad to know her. <laughs>